Good morning. In today's video, I want to talk about essentials. You're going to have an RV or you're heading out somewhere. What are the necessity we need to make sure that we can hook up the power somewhere? Let's get right back. We hope you're enjoying our videos. We'd like to have you subscribe and ring that notification bell. Turn the notifications on so you'll know when our next video comes out. Welcome back. First and foremost, you typically will get power out of a pedestal. So you'll have either 30 amp or 50 amp. So if you have a 50 amp camper, you need options because they're gonna say, well, you only have 30 amp AC, so you only have the availability, the capacity of using 30 amp, which we can go by, that's not a problem. But the first thing that I would recommend is whenever we go to a campsite or wherever we park somewhere, you typically end up with your camper will have a 25 to 35 foot long cord. So if your camper is 40 foot, 30 foot, it's about right in the middle. Well, that's about the distance you have on each end. We've parked at some places by the water where the electrical pedestal was in front of the camper. So, oops, problem. So you got a cord, you got nothing to go hook up to the pedestal. So you need an extension. So these are mine because with years of experience, we've had those short coming. So I actually offer in my book, there's two sides that I want. I want another 25 footer of whatever amperage that I had, like mine, let's say this one is a 50 amp. As you recognize those, those are those four prongs, four prongs unit, female and male. This is 50 amp cable, 25 feet. That's the first thing that I like to have on hand in case it ends up being too far away. Like everything in life, um, it's always a foot too far away and you don't have that and your cord is reaching out. So I got this one that's a big helper all the time. Still same thing, 50 amp, but it's just a little 10 footer. So I can throw this in the back of the truck. I actually have a place in my bay where I just hook it up so it's always with me. But that's that 10 foot that I'm missing. It's like those garden hose that we have. You always miss that 10 foot, that five foot, that two. Well, get one of these 10 foot, that could save your ass, sorry. Uh, your life once in a while so 10 foot for this 25 foot for this that's the first thing that I look at second of all this will become a choice you do whatever you think is the best or whatever you research um, those um, progressive has some of those uh, bulldog has some um, those to go directly on your pedestal, those either a transformer or a surge protector. This, by the way, is what we use. This is Hughes Autoformer. It's also uh, a transformer plus a surge protector integrated. You can do some research on those. I think it's nice because the minute you plug yourself to the pedestal, it will give you the reading of the power coming out of your legs. So already you know, if there's not enough power in that pedestal, do not plug your RV you're gonna create issues. So this also gives a boost without getting technical. This gives a boost, a boost of about 10%. So if there's only 119 coming out of the pedestal, you can gain 121, 22. So it's kind of good to have that surge of power so it protects in my book, in my opinion. And it's kind of heavy though, probably about 30, 35 pounds. Those protector, everybody's common with this. This was a 30 amp. They also have 50 amp. So you need one of those when you go camping for your first time. You do not, cannot trust a pedestal. Uh, a lot of old campgrounds and all of old places that don't maintain their electrical, they're a little bit overwhelmed. It's outside, it's in the weather all the time. So keep that in mind. So these are more, this is a gadget that I like because I plug to a 50 amp hookup on my pedestal. Well, the 30 amp is always available. So I actually plug my 30 amp and it gives me two 110 outlets. So I kind of like this little gizmo. Well, we'll probably put a link at the bottom of the video. So if you want to get one of those, that could be cool. These are more susceptible for AC. So 
here's an what is called an L14. So see on those you've got to figure out which kind of pattern you have because they got different kind of pattern. Like my generator will hook up with this one. That's the one of my I've, I've got a Generac 3500, and then I need this one to adapt to this. So my generator is actually plugged into the generator, and this actually supplies my 50 amp. So I'm always talking about 50 amp. Well, you guys have a 30 amp. All right, so that's where we need to become creative. And it will always work, by the way. So you take your little magical box, and now you got all the gadgets that you got to get out of there, all the different options that you actually need to get out. This is my personal stuff, but this is one of those to modify if I want to haul my trailer on my seven prong on my truck to have a little seven pin or a little four pin so it transforms your truck receptacle into those different hookup well let's do the same thing with our camper so with our camper we got a 50 amp hookup so that's 50 amp for for those who have a 50 amp you recognize those um a 30 amp would have those three prongs just like i had on this one so this is 30 amp this is 50 amp 30 50 so since i have a 50 and now i end up uh, having to adapt to a 30 amp so you checked in you can only have a 30 amp site you say all right i'll do the 30 amp site with water so no big deal no there is no big deal so you actually take an adapter like this so from 50 amp to 30 amp so now you plug yourself into your 50 amp, into your 30 amp plug, and now you're ready to go camping on the 30 amp plug. Yes, now you're gonna have to think of power management. A 30 amp plug will not run three air conditioner. It will run two air conditioner if you got the proper setup from soft start to either it came from the manufacturer or now I heard that soft start, soft start also had that you can put it directly in the pedestal, which we'll have to try that and figure that out how it works. But that's another option. So now I went from 50, 30, down to 30 to, to, to plug into the, the pedestal. And now if I say, okay, well, I'm at my friend, Wimmuch Dawkin, they just have a 110 outlet outside and they don't have this kind of setup or they don't have a 50 amp. So I can take my 30 amp and turn my 30 amp into a 110 amp so now i'm actually plugged in my neighbors well not your neighbors unless they know but you plug in somebody's shore power and i also bypass that i go directly for me because it happened before i don't have the 30 amp i don't need it i got the 50 amp so we actually have the 50 amp with the cord that we just used barely in vermont at eric's place yes eric i'm talking about you which that was interesting too. He's an electrician by trade from Brussels. And uh, we actually had a 20 amp breaker and it didn't quite do the job. I'd trip an AC if something else would start in the, in the camper. So we actually took a 30 amp breaker and switch it over and just plugged into 110 and now we were good to go. So here's another adapter. So there you go. That's your adapter from your, from your camper directly to 110. This, for people who still watch cable, so people, I guess, 55 and over, because I don't think nobody use cable anymore, but as you can see, we had that 50 foot cable. So in case it's free and we have it, we have it. So that's about it. The rest is just up to you, extension cord. A little, I got a, I got a little dimmer, automatic dimmer that I put on on one of those palm trees that we use. So it shuts off at, that's a dimmer. We also have a, I also have a timer that I can put on. So then your imagination just carries you on. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you need any more detail, I don't know what to tell you. So just remember and do never forget, it's not about the destination. It's all about the journey.